I'll wait for the campfire to stop roaring a little bit. Okay, here's the lull in the roaring campfire behind us. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Bruce Norquist. I'm a security practitioner for, God, who, 20, 30 years, something like that. Uh, I've been doing security work since 1990, about 1990 when I worked on my, actually 1992 I was starting to work on my first B3 system from the Rainbow Series. I don't know if any, I see a head nodding back there. <laughs> yeah, so, anyway. Okay. Yeah, the Tech Rainbow. So. I worked on those systems, and they were compartmentalized mode workstations, and actually they were kind of like the uh, the new uh, SE Linux, but a little different. But, but um, we're not here to talk about that. I'm here to earn my free ticket for the Wild West Hacking Fest. So <laughs> this is about the stride threat model of a cloud application. I just kind of did it as a high level just to get the exposure of the threat, the stride threat model the methodology, if you want to think of it that way. Um, this, the opinions and everything else are my own. I do not represent my company that I work for, which is Visa. That's the last time you hear me say that. But um, I'm a CISSP and a C-RISC. Here's the quick little agenda. Um, and I'll buzz through this because I have 16 slides, but I'll, some of them are kind of repetitive and easy to, to look at. Here's the Wikipedia definition of stride. The real thing that you need to think about is it's a way of looking at an application or a system and methodology. And it has this moniker that is stride, spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and uh, elevation of privilege. So those are the, the, uh, this, the things that STRIDE s stands for. And I was just spending some time last night reviewing a major security specification for uh, one of the big name players that we were looking at. And I spent about four hours looking at the the stride threat model that we use at work and it was very complicated if you let it be. So here's a different ways to look at the perspective here. You have stride and you can look at it from terms of security functionality like the application security, data protection, IAM or the infrastructure and the CIA triad, or you can go even wider and look at things in controls and components. And here's a, just a small sampling list of the different controls and components that you could look at. So the person I was reviewing the, the threat model for last night, she was like, I can't think of things in terms of stride. I think of things in terms of components or controls. I don't think of things in terms of how I'm going to break it because I'm not necessarily a, a web a web application programmer. So this is kind of the high level perspectives that you could look at stride through. So the one of the level sets that you have to look at when you're doing a stride thread model well, for anything is what's the context that you're looking at and as footnoted below here, this is from the CCSP boot camp. Uh, the CCSP study guide is the reference sort, and it's the enterprise responsibility of the, the providers or the shared responsibility of the providers and the customers or the, the cloud provider responsibility. This is pretty self-explanatory, but um, really trying to figure out where your application sits and where the, the responsibility lies is a little more challenging than, than just this. Here's AWS and their, their way that they look at things and here's the fine print and where your responsibilities are versus where AWS says, says that their responsibility is, resides. 
and uh, these slides will be provided and the, you can also email me at bruce.norquist at gmail.com um, after this and I'll share these with you. So from looking at AWS, you can look at the responsibilities or you can look at the different security services that are provided by AWS and there's a long laundry list of these high level security services that they provide, whether it's DOS protection or HSMs or IAMs or firewalls or WAF. These are all the different capabilities that you need to look at that are available and that's the challenge with AWS is there's so many things that's available. If you look at the marketplace alone, in the real fine print up at the top, it says like eight, 800, 896 different security vendor services are out there that are bolt-on products that you could add. If you don't like the default AWS firewall, you can build your own or you install your own and you can pay money for them. So here is the sample application that I'll be talking about. We'll zoom in a little bit on following slides, but this is right off the AWS website. Uh, you're zoomed in just a little bit more, so it's not so much of an eye test for you. So as you see, there's AWS components all over here, but basically what you end up having is you have your mobile phones, your mobile SDK, or your game backend server in the far bottom left corner. So let's take a look at it in another perspective. And I give kudos to AWS because they actually have a online app uh, PowerPoint and Visio drawings that you can download these icons and make it look wonderful like this is. I can't take the credit for this. It was just my stealing of the AWS icons from the provided PowerPoints that they have. But the bottom line is here you start to get a flow of the application from the devices to what's in the cloud. And if we go back here, you can see uh, the Amazon Kinesis Dynamic Analytics or the Kinesis Data Streams or the Data ho Fire Hose, uh, the purple icon I'm referring to here. Um, we streamlined this into one Amazon Kinesis here that is basically taking the IAM of the cog Cognito to the Amazon Kinesis, and then it goes and spawns off into the different uh, services that it's going to be using. So here it gets a little bit more complex and complicated. Um, and the blue circles are basically the, the th threats that I've identified at a high level. I mean, you can go in and the one challenge I'll say with stride thread modeling that you end up having to do is unless you have a, a great mind that has all sorts of different perspectives, it really helps to have a team to look at these because everybody brings a little bit more to the, to the drawing or to the threat model with, when you team it. And so the S1 or T1 or R1, I'll refer to what the, you know, it's a stride, uh, the spoofing first threat or the tampering first threat. And the, I placed them at the different icons here. What we do at work, we do something similar to this with Visio, and we footnote and kind of have a table of contents or a key below the screen, which is really fine print. So you have S1 there and that's the Amazon Cognito is the, the, the S1 and it's footnoted and identified what we have on the second pa this next page but um, this is just a high level perspective 
Yes. So, so what you can do is you can do that. Um, uh, what I've done here is just identified the first threats and the first threat in, in any application is the IAM in my book. And so that's why I labeled it S1, T1, R1, E1 and tied it to that component. Um, and if you didn't have Cognito, you might not have a good IAM posture. So basically, these are blue controls that are in place. So what I'm trying to identify are the, the threats that are, that are compensated by some control mechanism that's provided by AWS. Um, what we also do at work is when we have a, a finding or a unresolved control that we have identified that's a risk, we do it in a red circle. So if we didn't have DDoS, actually, where is it? Well, let's hop down to the here. D1. So if we look at D1, which is the AWS shield, which is not in the flow, but it's kind of like the the outer shield, is the DOS protection. Is That's kind of a, um, a uh, cloud generic general control that is supposed to be compensated by AWS. Well, if you've if you receive SANS Newsbyte, you just heard today that AWS had an eight-hour DOS or DDoS outage just the last day or so because they have they had 53 DNS servers that were acting up. I guess is, they didn't really say what they were doing, but they was just acting up and being uh, bad. So I, w I would actually change that D1 from a blue circle to a red circle because it doesn't seem to help in this case. So back to my table here. So this is a, one of the ways that we do this is we identify the threats, the function, what they're providing, database encryption for the I1. And the product in this case was AWS Dynamo for the database encryption. So this is very quick, high level, 15 minute, 20 minute pitch of AWS stride thread models. But I figured I'd give you a couple takeaways in my book. Some of the pros, a AWS is highly configurable. It's to the point that it's very complicated. Uh, and let me explain this. There's complex, which is you can have a very complex engineering solution to to build a new space shuttle, or you can have a complicated solution. Complicated is, my, in my thinking, is bad, where complex is good. So if you don't engineer something right, you have a complicated mess on your hands, and that's what I've seen in several of my application assessments of different cloud applications, AWS in particular, as they get complicated. Um, the, the power of AWS is very complex because they've all well engineered it, but if you don't configure it right and, and look at things in detail, it can be complicated, and complicated is where you have errors and missteps and configuration errors where you have breaches and ugly, nasty things like that. So that's one of the reasons why I say AWS is highly configurable as a con it's very easy to set up, which is a con. In the sales marketing literature, and I'm sure you'd see AWS, it's so configurable you can set it up in less than 10 minutes. I've done it myself, but it was open to the world, which is a bad thing. And uh, last bullet here is I think um, AWS and other cloud security providers or, and also cloud security customers who are selling their SaaS applications out to the world should be a little bit more diligent in their controls and their configurations of these complex environments because if they don't watch out, they'll be complicated as well. So here's the fine print. Uh, 
bruce.norquist at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter, and I'm also on LinkedIn. And here is the long laundry list of different uh, references that I looked at. This is this is the eye chart test, but. Um, So is there any questions? Uh, I'd be more than happy to entertain questions. I've assessed over at least 200, probably closer to 300 different cloud applications and cloud, uh, cloud environments. Yes. Can you bolt two fin onto? Can you bolt two fin onto? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you can bolt two fin in on AWS or not. Yes. Stride. Oh, it's back here. Look at the answer is in Wikipedia. But here, stride transfer, spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege. And this is verbatim out of the link to, uh, web uh, Wikipedia. Any other questions? I know I covered a lot. I was surprised I got through all 16 slides. Um, there's a lot of different ways to look at the thread modeling and application or an infrastructure and Stride is just one of the handful of different uh, names that they use. There's Dread, there's, I want to say there's Trike, I've, but there's also Pasta. I don't know if anybody's heard of Pasta, which is kind of a risk type approach also. So this is just one of the ones that we use at work and we try to do a lot of application. Every new application at this point, we try to do a threat model against it just to see where the warts are, where the holes are, and where there might be potential vulnerabilities or lack of coverage of different controls. Yes. Uh, why did the, why did we settle on Stride? I think it was because at that point we were kind of a Microsoft shop in a way, and the CISO got the earful from somebody but I, I, I'm pretty much agnostic to this because uh, when I was getting my master's and John Strand was one of my adjunct professors, we did threat modeling on the master's course. And it was, it was like, well, how, how do you look at this? Do you cover it through, let me go back to this perspective, please. You can use Stride to look at it. It's kind of your one pink rosy sunglasses. And you can look at it through functionality from the different functions or the CIA triad, which is always good. Or you can look at it through different controls or components. If you look at things through PCI, you can you could thread model everything against it, uh, an application using PCI constructs and controls if you wanted to. You, and we do that in assessments. So it's just just a high level look at the perspective and it just just is. Sure. Any other questions? Did I earn my tickets? I got free tickets to come here and to talk about this for 15, 20 minutes. So all right, well thanks very much and uh, have a good weekend.